From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. And would you ask, John... Oh, it is you. Was there some doubt about it? No, but I was phoning Captain Peral. He's out of his office at the moment. What's the matter, Burton? Somebody shooting at you again? That's not funny, Mr. Dollar. Who's laughing? A man's been murdered, you know. And I think that's anything but a laughing matter. I said, who's laughing? And except for the whims of fate, it might well be me lying dead at this moment. And that's really why you're upset, isn't it, Burton? Because it might have been you. You're not really concerned about Al's death. I was extremely fond of the boy. You were no fonder of him than he was of you. So save that good old lovable Charlie business for your television audience. I never did buy it myself. Dollar, may I remind you that your position... I know my position in it. I'm an incidental to protect your life because some company was crazy enough to write a half-million-dollar policy on you. All right, you're still alive, aren't you? Goodbye, Burton. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location in Sonata, Mexico, to the home office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the laughing matter. Expense account, final page. Item 12, 50 cents, two bottles of beer, one for myself and one for Capitan Peral. We sat in his office in the Comandancia de Police and drank them slowly and watched the sun sink behind the headlands across the bay. And we waited. The daytime heat reluctantly loosened its grip, and the town, pushing off the lethargy of afternoon, stirred to the quickened pace of evening. A sprinkling truck passed slowly, sweeping the dusty, rutted street with a spurting broom of water. Gleeful kids ran out behind it and splashed in the puddles, squealing happily. Spanish squeals they were. The Comandancia off the tourist beat, and all the while, somewhere back inside the building, an autopsy surgeon worked on a corpse. Bueno, senor. Ya está listo. The medico is all finished now. Well, what's the verdict, Perot? It's what we are thinking. El se mató por veneno. He was, um, how you say, uh, poison. What kind of poison? El dice uh, cyanura. How you call it? Cyanide? Uh, si, senor, cyanide. And he are say also are very much cyanide in this bottle which you has given to me. Yeah, yeah, I thought it smelled like it. Al drank a glass and a half out of it and then dropped dead right in front of the camera. And you are saying the wrong man has drunk it? The, the wrong one is get killed, no? That's right. Charlie Burton was supposed to play that role himself. But this morning at breakfast, he agreed to let Al have the part. I was there. I heard it. So if he was not do that, uh, he is one who will be dead now. Sure. Charlie Burton himself. And it figures, Peral. He's been the target all along. That threatening note that was slipped under his door, somebody firing a shot at him last night. Si, seguro. Then when they finally got their punch in, they tagged the wrong guy. I don't understand what has happened to this Nacho Morales. Hmm, Valena's husband, the maid at the hotel that Charlie kept annoying. Ensenada, I know, is one big place. It's very small, this town. And we are look every place, senor, but we are no find this man. I don't know, Peral. And yet I got a hunch he's the key to this whole thing. We find him, senor. It's no way for us. Get this down. We find him muy pronto now. You bet your life. Item 13, $1.40. Taxi back to the hotel. Lights were coming on. A cool breeze was starting to blow in off the Pacific. And the whole town was brightening up to the challenge of the night. But not me. Technically, of course, the job I'd been sent here to do was still under control. Big-time comedian Charlie Burton, a great big lovable scream to his public, had been insured by his television sponsor for a half million bucks. Then Burton had received the anonymous note threatening his life. So I was here to protect the insurance company's investment. I didn't care personally what happened to Burton. It was just a job. But I did care about Al. Johnny. Mm. Oh, hello, Gloria. What is it, Johnny? What happened? No one seems to know anything definite about it. Al Shriver's dead poisoned. That's all I know about it. Come on in the lounge. I'll buy you a drink. All right, Johnny. Have they found that man who was missing? What's his name? Nacho Morales. No, he's still missing. This table all right? Sure, anywhere. Waiter. Si, senor. Two margaritas, please. Frank Maltz said something about Charlie and Al changing parts. Yeah. Maltz got Charlie mad and he made the switch to prove a point. What point? 
that Al wasn't ready for a starring role. Oh, that's right. You didn't come down for breakfast this morning. No, I wasn't in today's scenes, so I just slept in. It's just as well. It wasn't a very pretty sight. Oh, it's a rotten shame. Al was a real swell guy. Con permiso, senor. Oh, here you are. Gracias, senor. Oh, boy, the irony in this world, Johnny. What do you mean? Charlie Burton, who's been a rat all his life, makes his usual crude play for the maid here in the hotel, and what happens? Her husband hits back at the wrong man. Al gets killed. A kid who'd never harm anybody in his life, and Charlie gets off scot-free. I was with Captain Peral last night when he talked to the Morales girl, not just wife. She doesn't speak any English, Gloria, and she says her husband doesn't either. Well, he wouldn't need to, would he, to pull a trigger or poison a bottle of Maybe water? not, but he would in order to write a threatening note in English. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. If Nacho's in it, he's not in it alone. And I've got a hunch he's... Uh, the telephone, senor. Oh, thanks. Johnny Dollar. This is uh, Capitan Parral, senor. What is it, Parral? We have just found his man, Nacho Morales. Good, I'll be right down. But, Johnny... Do you think Frank Maltz might have... Not if he was after Charlie Burton. He knew that Al, not Burton, was going to drink out of that bottle. But didn't everybody know that? No, not everybody, Gloria. You didn't. Nacho Morales was sitting alone in the starkly barren detention room of the Comandancia. He was a small man, maybe a few years older than his wife. A field worker with gnarled hands and a bent back. He was waiting patiently, quietly, gripping the brim of his sombrero in his hands, trying to hide the fear, the terror that lay just behind his eyes. His eyes flickered slightly as Peral and I opened the steel grill door. And then he waited. Buenos dias, hombre. Buenos dias, Capitan. Tu eres Nacho Morales, es verdad? Si, sí, senor. Y eres tu esposa de Valina Morales? Si, sí, senor. Como pasó la noche, hombre? Pues, uh, regular, Locked off señor. by the barrier of language, regular. I watched while Peral no questioned him, stopping now and then to translate. En la barca de pescar, then Peral asked no. the question that started yes. the avalanche. Es la pura verdad, señor. Dígame una cosa. ¿Por qué tú trataste de matar al señor anoche? Why did you try to kill that man last night? No, Capitán, es mentira decirlo. Yo no traté de matar a nadie. No es cierto. In answer to Peral's accusation, Nacho's story poured out in a flood of Spanish. And as I stood there listening to it translated, I began to feel sick inside. I'd been blind. All the facts were there, all the evidence. And I'd still failed to spot the play. Nacho's story was the key. It fit. And I knew he was telling the truth. He'd been hiding out on a friend's fishing boat since the night before. He knew he'd be accused. Because he had been at the hotel when the shot was fired through Burton's window. He was hiding in the shrubbery by the terrace, and he'd seen the whole thing. The shot had been fired by Charlie Burton himself. Who is it? Johnny Dollar. I want to talk to you, Burton. All right. Just a minute. What is it, Dollar? Have they caught that killer yet? Not Joe Morales, you mean? Yeah. Burrell picked him up about an hour ago. I just came from there. Has he confessed? No, he hasn't. Well, they ought to beat it out of him. That's the only way to make that kind talk. It is, huh? Sit down, Burton. I think you're due for a shock. What are you talking about? Nacho didn't try to kill you. Well, then who did? Nobody. Are you crazy? What about Al Shriver? I suppose he's not even dead. Oh, he's dead, all right. You ought to know. You killed him. Uh, that was your whole plan, wasn't it, Burton? To kill Al Shriver and get away with it. Everything else was a preliminary buildup. Oh, that's very funny. You ought to be on television. Well, there's going to be an opening soon. You wrote that threatening letter yourself. What? And then tore it up after Maltz had seen it so it couldn't be traced back to you. Well, you get better all the time. You fired that shot through your window from the terrace there. More buildup. Then you made your play that phony argument this oh, morning. Oh, no, really? Switching Dollar. parts with Al, putting him on the spot, making it look as though somebody had tried to poison you and missed. It was fairly clever, Burton, but you're still going to be tagged for it. Does Peral know all this? Why don't you ask him? I'll be glad to step... All right, Dollar. Don't move. Get your hands up now. Real slow. Is that the same gun you used last night? You're wrong, you know. I'm not going to be tagged. Relax, Burton. There's no capital punishment in Mexico. You can star in all the prison shows. You're too smart, Dollar. You're like Al. 
And you know what happened when he got too smart. You had dropped his gun, senor. Paral. I started to tell you I'd be glad to call him that he was listening out there on the terrace. He's gone. You drop quick. No. Look out, Paral. Mira, senor. I am not shoot too bad, I think. No. No, not bad at all, Paral. Well, he asked for it. I am see he is go to pull his trigger, so I are to shoot much fast. Bam, bam, bam. I tell you, he's look very surprised, senor. Yeah. It's too bad he couldn't have seen the look on his face. A comedian would have really appreciated it. Why, he'd have died laughing. Item 14, $462.30. Hotel and miscellaneous in Ensenada and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $791.55. End of account, end of report. Remarks? Ray policy on the life of Charles Z. Burton, deceased. Refer clause 34, subparagraph C, quote, If the insured dies while committing a felony, this policy is null and void, unquote. The Superior Court of Baja California rules that Burton was shot while resisting arrest and committing an assault with a deadly weapon. So you can keep your half million bucks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week... A frantic chase across the country after a girl who couldn't possibly exist. Then suddenly turned up. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, John Daner, Lucille Meredith, Lawrence Dobkin, Gil Stratton, Harry Bartell, and Don Diamond. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>